Reinhardt and myself, Paul Bakke, we're both licensed therapists at Behavioral Sciences of Alabama, and we're going to talk a little bit about creating positive conditions for therapy for children and teenagers and some issues to consider uh, as you move into a therapeutic situation with your child. So let's start with uh, what we call antecedent conditions, you know, the, the creating the conditions prior to uh, whatever the event is. So a big part of that is taking time to prepare for the sessions, being very encouraging to your child about therapy, being honest about those kinds of things, showing uh, confidence in your child's ability to be successful and help meet family, family goals and being open and clear with reasons and expectations for therapy. You know, what's the problem that's affecting the family? It might be anger, it might be uh, OCD rituals, it might be anxiety, it may be some kind of behavioral issue, but it's obviously uh, a part of the family system. And so one of the things that happens is parents can get into this back and forth about how this is really gonna help you. This is, don't you see how this is going to help you? And it becomes this argument. The kid might be resistant to, to changing into therapy. And so making it about the family is more about it, giving information. This is going to help the family uh, as we move along because it's all of us together. And, and um, so that, you know, a lot of times parents really have a hard time deciding, you know, how do we get our child ready and, um, and, one of the things that it's a common mistake is trying to convince them that they need it and it's going to help them. Yeah, the natural tendency is to be defensive. Uh, so anytime we, even as adults, are asked to do something we've not done before, we have no previous experience with, um, where other people are going to be talking with us about ourselves and what we do, there's some discomfort with that. Um, even people that come for marriage counseling don't just wake up one day and say, oh, let's just go, let's just go talk with a therapist about all the things we disagree about. That's um, right. probably- and there, it, Right, and there's different levels of desire to, for the change. You know, oh yeah, I, that sounds good. I want things to be better, but actually, doing the work is is difficult. After talking about the problems is is difficult. So there's an anticipation of this. Yeah, this is going to be hard. This is going to be difficult, and that's okay. We're going to be ready for that. Um, and being as honest and clear about what what the expectations are and uh, you know what the goals are from from the family's uh, perspective. Yeah. Because the child is, is probably not going to be super motivated exactly. um, to, to, to just do it, you know, and not only go to therapy, but do the work. Uh, it's important to establish a collaboration where there's a reward system that positive participation is going to lead to some kind of reward that, that's consistent with the family's values. And we, you know, we, a lot of times I'll hear parents go, well, they should just do it because we asked them to do it. You know, that's the you know, it's the right thing to do. Well, it's they're not ready for that. Right. <laughs> you know, they they don't see the value of it, and so there's nothing wrong with rewarding that with something that they value. You know, that that's, you're trying to motivate them to do something they don't want to do. And the key to all of it, and this is a lot of times what we hear, is that oh, we don't want to reward them with that. You know, that you know, the ice cream for breakfast. What are you talking about? You know, sometimes it takes whatever it takes to get started. Yes. Once a child does the behavior and does, makes the change, the need to have these big re outside rewards become less because it becomes more of its own internal reward. But you got to get the behavior first. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, so having a collaboration about um, Rewards is, is important, and that's the way our world works. You know, we're Motivation. Is rewarded right. with money, we work, you know, we grades, we work hard, we get things for it. You know, we're teaching them a value that helps them. All right, now the other thing is setting expectations for the parent participation. You know, I'm going to be working on this. I'm going to really work on lectures, you know, not, not lecturing you or, or you're raising my voice. 
whatever it is that parents might be contributing, it's an opportunity to tell the child, that, I want to work on this too. It's not just you. Um, I want to be less critical of you. Um, you know, and, children, and encouraging. children know their parents' best lecture. They already know it. So it's not a knowledge issue. So giving another lecture about the same subject is not motivating. Um, so I think it's important to recognize that if you just put more knowledge in, suddenly you're going to get all this insight and behavior change that, uh, that doesn't work. Right. So, so that's part, so part of that is, is anticipating the difficulty and resistance that comes with it as a parent and then having a plan for managing it as a family, you know, with the help of the therapist, you know, asking the therapist, what, how do I respond when, my child doesn't respond or, you know, or you know, shuts down or, or gets defensive or whatever, you know, um, having a strategy uh, to be able to deal with, because you go to therapy, life is going to happen. The problems are going to continue. Maybe the, the same thing might happen, uh, changing one part of the dynamic. If the family responds to it differently, uh, that gives the best chance of it to help. Therapists, the therapists have been there before, and so they're likely to have some coaching or some recommendations that can can help help you be prepared for things like resistance, yeah. lack of movement. All right. So now, now that you're ready, uh, you created these good positive antecedent conditions. Some things to think about during the therapeutic process would be reinforce any effort with praise, really reward and give positive attention to the positive behaviors. And that's really the, the main expectation that parents really need to have is that there's gonna be effort, not perfection, but effort. So anytime you see effort, praise, give the rewards you agreed to, follow, follow up with your end of the bargain. Because in many cases, some kind of behavior that leads people to therapy has been reinforced, maybe accidentally, by giving it a lot of attention. So we want to reinforce the, the positives with, uh, with praise and rewards. And pr practice, practice, uh, being more enthusiastic about praise. Uh, we, we certainly, as parents, have gotten enthusiastic about things we didn't like and you know we speak up about that and that's usually with some level of energy that turns out to be self-defeating most of the time right because it, as you say paul it gives attention to uh resistant or inappropriate or disrespectful behavior right. uh, at times yeah and and we want to be give minimal attention to that Thank you. Really try to minimize any attention to the negative behaviors. Um, and and it requires that people turn off, shut down their normal parenting criticism, do this, do this, don't do this. Do, it's, it's very natural for any parent to be very directive and, mm -hmm. and to give attention to, uh, to those things. And so it's, you know, when you're an engineer and you have a problem, you have to figure out how to fix it. True. You come up with the solution and fix it. Yeah. And but that's not true with people. Well, we unwittingly aren't aware of some of the root causes, and like negative attention is stimulating, and um, so we shoot ourselves in the foot when we think we're being helpful by being critical or, or being intimidating. Um, what happens is when you constrain a person's behavior, child or adult, they'll find a way to get around it. Yeah. So, you know, we so, do want to use some verbal skills and regulate our own emotions so we're not making the problem worse. And, and so that, so we're really kind of getting into the failure aspect of it. There is going to be failure. They're going to show some regression probably sometimes. 
So the whole idea is you think about it as data. This is data. What works, what doesn't work. And so failure is data that says we need to use that to help learn, help teach for the future. Not to be mad at them for what just happened, but to teach for next time. What just happened is gone. It's an opportunity to learn. Yeah, and uh, so focus. What looks like failure may mean really that what you're doing is having an impact and you're just seeing the outcome of that. If you stop reinforcing inappropriate behavior, you will like, it's like when somebody goes to a candy machine and puts money in and nothing comes out, what do they do? They beat on the machine or they push them <laughs> multiple times. Kids and adults do the, do the same kind of thing. You, you stop reinforcing this behavior and I may work harder to get the, the uh, excited attention. Even though I don't necessarily like it, it's just stimulating. Yeah, and so, and so a big part of all of that is choices. Because like we were saying, when you're criticizing and trying to intimidate anyone into doing something, you're going to get natural resistance. People want choices. Just think about the problems that have happened when people didn't feel like they had a choice to wear masks and you know, protect themselves and other people from the pandemic. Um, they've created a big problem because people just don't like being told what to do. Um, so children who don't regulate their emotions nearly as well as adults uh, have the capacity to do, they're going to resist any kind of forcing. So it's about choices. And choices don't mean that you can choose whatever and get what you want. Choice means you, you can cho choose whatever you want, but when you choose this, you're going to get this. And when you choose this, this is going to happen. That's uh, the consequences and rewards are in, in the control of the parent. And be okay with those choices. Yes. Even though you're really not inside, it feels <laughs> pretend like you're okay. Yeah. Then yeah. when you talk about it and you're calm and you give the choices and go in your room and tear your hair out, you know, in I, there. Well, cause... See, I pull all mine out, you know. <laughs> so, the, so the whole idea is what's next? You know, what, what, what are the choices? What's next? What do I need to learn from this? Um, and that's one thing that you can teach a child for sure. You can teach them that their choices will lead to this consequence or that reward. That's that's totally in your control. They'll they will learn that. Yes. Right. They'll okay. learn they have control and they'll learn that their choices lead to something either good or something not good. And that's the that's the focus. So teaching. Uh, one big consideration that I remember hearing in a conference before was that when parents are talking. A lot of times the child just stops thinking. They just go, what, what's your, you know, I'm just going to turn my brain off and either listen to what they're saying or just tune out. Mm -hmm. So really encourage your kids to talk and participate in their ideas as, as, uh, as you move along in this process. And that means that sometimes, um, you might need to deal with some silence. Yes. What do you think about that? What do you think we ought to do? What are some ideas that you have? You don't know? Okay, well, let's take some time to think about it. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. That's okay. Okay. Think, think about it a little while. You know, but really making an effort to listen and get them bought in to the, to the process. Yes. And then teaching through role modeling, you know, being able to say, I said I was going to work on not raising my voice, and I did, and I shouldn't have done that. You know, that was that was uh, that was not helpful for me to do that, and I want to keep working on that. And I apologize. You know, being able to take responsibility for our own mistakes as parents yes. uh, is really really important uh, for them to see that that's okay to do that. It is okay. It's also okay to pay a fine. So on occasion, you know, uh, so parent uh, says, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lecture. OK, 
because we really don't want them to lecture because it's giving attention to the thing that they really don't want. So we work it in. And, and what I found, sometimes parents are resistant to paying a fine. So, uh, so the parent might agree, every time I give you a lecture, I'm going to give you $5. Now, I used to say a dollar, but inflation, you know, has an impact. But $5 will, that'll, that'll bring the frequency way down, and, and you're going to find other ways of communicating. That's right. You like the fine idea, Paul? I like that idea. Yeah. We're, it's going to, their behavior going to cost them something. It needs to cost parents something too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we're all in this together. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that's the, that's kind of the main thing is creating some conditions prior to being clear with expectations, being ready for di difficulty, teaching through failure, uh, role modeling, encouraging, um, participation and ideas from, from your kids. Those are, those are some things to think about as you're, uh, as you're trying to, you know, looking at, looking at therapy. Oh, oh, and the thing that we, we didn't talk about accommodation. Like when the kid doesn't want to come and they don't want, they don't want to, um, I'm keep the appointments. Don't, don't cancel because the kid doesn't want to do it. Yeah. I've got homework. I don't feel like it. Yeah. I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to talk when I get there. Yeah. That's their choice. Yeah. Teach them, teach them that you're going to follow through with it and that this is part of the deal. And they've got a choice to participate or not. And it's going to either bring some kind of a reward or some kind of cost to them. Um, and Again, e either one is okay yes. when you're when you're responding to the child. You know that's yeah. their choice. You absolutely, uh, but that it's that all choice is going to lead to something. Learning, it's a learning process, and so yeah. there there's feedback, positive feedback, negative feedback. We're trying to really work on increasing the level of positive feedback, so we're strengthening the behaviors that we want. We're weakening the behaviors that we don't. Right. If I try, I get what I want. If I don't try, I don't. If I mess up, dad won't yell at me. Yes. <laughs> you know, you, you want you want them to learn that you, you have control of what they learn based on their behavior, whatever their choice is, and, and also what you're doing, wanting them to learn. Uh, from from whatever um, so not reinforcing the negatives and really reinforcing the positives is is just this aim and when we get emotional as parents it's important to step back and evaluate that what's the learning and what's the next what have i learned from that what, what's the next step what's the goal yeah breathe <laughs> be sure to breathe be sure to breathe that helps. I like your. Right, that's a, I like that's, your preparation for parents uh, being uncomfortable and learning to cope with the discomfort and anticipating those things. I think it really increases the probability that you're going to have a good outcome with your therapeutic endeavor with your child. Right. It's 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 not going to be a perfect situation. So the. The worst thing parents can do sometimes is think, okay, I'm going to counseling now. I'm taking my child to counseling. Everything's going to be fixed, and the counselor's just going to do magic. Yes. <laughs> you know, anticipate that it's not, it might not be smooth. Um, Unlike the more, the more you're ready for it, the better, the better success you're going to have. All right. That's all, that's all I got. So hopefully, uh, anybody can learn from this and think about that if you're, Thinking about putting your child into into a counseling situation, those are some considerations to, to think about. Good plan. Thanks, Paul. All right.